watching the ASP Productions on YouTube. Hi, my name is Krzysztof and I'm the uh, Living History Reenactor, the member of the uh, Polish American Living History Association. The organization which uh, presents the history of the uh, Polish Armed Forces from the period right before the World War II and during the World War II. So we are the uh, living history uh, collectors and reenactors. We collect the uh, Artifacts, the uniforms, the, uh, the pieces of equipment, also the available uh, pieces of the weaponry, and those uh, things we preserve, try to maintain it in the original shape. So when the uh, events like this are organized, we can come out and presented to the public so we can spread the uh, knowledge about the involvement of the uh, Polish military in the World War II period. Okay. Can you show your stuff? Yes, yes we have a... Uh, I brought with me today my part of my collection. This is not everything. I, uh, I try to bring the uh, the pieces which I thought would actually be the most proper for the occasion like this, like the show. Uh, that first part here, this is the, uh, the military chaplain field set, which it's unfortunate, it, it's, it's American made, it's very similar to the one which was used by the, uh, the Polish chaplains. So I tried to make it look like it, it was actually used by the Poles. And uh, this is actually a symbolic thing, since the, uh, the chaplains, uh, the services were also part of the Polish military, so they were represented very well. And, uh, this is a tribute here, not only to the chaplains and the Polish military, but it's also a tribute to the victims of the uh, the oppressive system of the uh, the Russian uh, communist Bolsheviks, which uh, unfortunately massacred a tremendous amount. Of the uh, about under 30,000, about 27, 28,000 of the Polish uh, elite that included in primarily the members of the Polish military, but not only. And those uh, killings were unfortunately carried uh, during the years of 1940, 1941 and later on the uh, Soviet-occupied territories. So this is the tribute to all these men and women which unfortunately lost their lives during that time not fighting the enemy, but unfortunately being uh, purposely executed and killed. So, at the time when Poland would regain independence and freedom, these people would not be able to help to build it up as a strong and solid country. There would be much less people because of that, which would uh, be the leading force of uh, uh, rebuilding nation. So here's my tribute, and also this is a tribute to the uh, unfortunate event which uh, happened in uh, 2010 when there was a fatal crash of the uh, jetliner carrying the representation of the Polish government 
for the uh, event outside of Smolensk and Katyn. And that plane unfortunately crashed upon landing over there by killing everybody on board. So that's a tribute to the memory of these folks. Too. So that's a, that's the first part of this way here. You can also see a symbolic 19 pre-war cavalry helmet, which was originally a French uh, Adrian helmet, pattern 1915, which was converted by the Poles. So that's what the uh, Polish mounted troops were using, and he was the officer's uh, square head. The actual name was Rogatywka, symbolic of the uh, reserve officer, the symbol of reserve officers. For a part of the, uh, they, they were actually part of the mobilized forces, which were taken captured as the prisoners by the. Uh, the Soviet Red Army in, 19, in 1939 actually at the time when they actually entered the Polish territory. Here is the uh, it's a part of the display which uh, I present uh, examples of the military uh, personal gear and some of the uh, equipment issued to the uh, Now on this, on this part here, we see the uh, the uniform, the part of the uniform, and the actual gear used by the member of the Polish Independent Parachute Brigade. This is what it's called the Denison Smock, which was carry, which was actually they were using those as a, as, a, as an airborne troops. A distinctive Polish grey beret, which was making the distinction in the airborne troops between them and the British, which were wearing the maroon beret. It's a standard webbing, which was the British, the British pattern 1937. Those are the uh, the brand. Mag pouches. This is the water canteen. That's the bayonet for the Lien for Prime. Cross straps. And this is the, uh, the gas mask, which was used at the time was issued in the carrier. So, now, here on this part, this is the uh, for the rifle, for the, for the Mauser rifle, which is the part of the weapons display there. That's the uh, entrenchment zone used by the troops, by the Polish troops, before 1939 and in 39 campaign. That is actually the uh, the cap, Polish-made cap for uh, the troops issued. The gas mask which was the older pattern, but it was still used by the troops. And um, that's the black beret is the, uh, it's actually the symbol of the uh, the Polish armor, which uh, was using the black beret in September 39 and also for the rest of the war uh, with the first and, and the second uh, armor brigade organized uh, by the troops in exile. And that's a small size here, the utensils for the uh, the, uh, the mask kit. It's also part of the British uh, set here. The personal set here. It's a sleeping bag, actually, which was uh, issued to the troops also in the field. And the cot, obviously, for the troops which were uh, stations in, in the tents. That's what they were. That's what we have right here. Let's come up to the, uh, the weapons display. Here we have the uh, an example of the British made weapon. This is the uh, light machine gun brand. And this is a uh, pattern Mark II, which was a standard issue. Uh, infantry and this particular one 
is in uh, it's mounted on the tripod in that uh, stationary defensive position. So you can see it mounted on the, on the tripod with the uh, magazine full. The sp I mean the the, the box with the uh, additional uh, mags which uh, were used. This is the. Uh, This is what they were using for cleaning and maintaining the gun. Here is the uh, the actual cover, which was used for the time when the weapon was transported and was in use. It's available. We have a spare barrel and the uh, spare barrel pouch, which uh, the spare barrel is actually presented here. So you can actually see this is the uh, exactly the same, ready for the quick replacement. They're always uh, uh, available for the uh, troops that were issued. They, they, they had two of them. Uh, for the quick replacement. The uh, ammo, the small size cra crates for the ammo, for the uh, rifles. Uh, this was the uh, 303 drugs, obviously, and the guns were issued for the troops. This is the, the small size pack, which was used most common by the troops in the field. This is where the soldiers were carrying goes for the light order, which were basically carrying the most important stuff with them when they were going to the fight. That's the uh, typical infantry helmet, the Polish markings. This particular is original. The, the eagle was actually stenciled and uh, I found it recently uh, while I was uh, in Poland. Uh, issue helmet for the, uh, the Polish uh, infantry uh, and for the, the uh, troops in exile. And then what we have here, we have uh, two rifles. The first one is the uh, it's a Mauser. This particular Mauser was uh, made in uh, 1915. I don't know if you can see this here, but the year is actually. You know what, for a little bitty jet, that thing uses up a lot of sky in a hurry, doesn't it? He's coming around behind us here, he's getting set up. Yeah, come on, 7.7 to get out of my way up there. There we go, come on. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen, follow past number one. Cameras at camcorder still rolling, right? Keep your eyes on this. He's going to demonstrate this, and it's going to look like a bottle rocket. Oh, wait a minute! He changed the camera. 